Prostatitis is an inflammation or an infection to the prostate. The prostate is a small gland in a man that sits at the base of the bladder. If you watch my videos on kidney stones, you'll know that the, the, how the uh, kidneys and the ureters bring urine down into the bladder, and when the bladder is ready to release the urine, it goes to the urethra out the penis. Well, it's got to pass through before, it, on its way out the urethra, it's got to pass through the prostate. So the prostate sticks like a large gland around the urethra. If the prostate is not uh, inflamed, swollen, or enlarged, then the urethra works great. When this gland gets bigger, which usually happens with uh, older men, it starts to choke off the, uh, the drainage point and you'll have less flow, you'll have less stream, less velocity, more frequent urination, and sometimes problems with ejaculation. All that's because the prostate get, gets enlarged. Now in prostatitis, whether it's infectious or benign prostatic hypertrophy, uh, I should say enlargement, we always have to make sure that the prostate is not cancerous. The only way to do that is by feel. You usually have to do a rectal exam and kind of feel the prostate, see if it's enlarged, see if it's asymmetrical. And then a more sensitive test is an ultrasound. It's when you put a microphone wand in here in the rectum and you get a picture, an anatomical picture. If there's a problem with nodularity or we see small nodules, possible precancers, then we repeat that. But this, the next time we do biopsies where you take a very fine needle, get a biopsy of the prostate gland, and I've been told it doesn't hurt. It's just unnerving to have a wand up your butt. So, and the, the sound it makes, I've heard, is very uh, unnerving as well. So if you ever have to get it done, at least with my patients, I give them uh, something to help them relax a little bit. I don't think that the guys that do the procedures want them to do that because they might pass out or have a problem driving home. But either way, when the biopsies have been negative, thank God, but then we treat you with anti-inflammatories or anti-inflammatory diet. In the worst cases, we usually give medicines. There are medicines that actually shrink the prostate. The medicines that shrink the prostate actually decrease the size and help with the symptoms of overflow or frequency or sometimes even ejaculation. The only problem with those medicines, and they work great, but the only problem with the medicines is that they can hide a cancer. In the future, they can hide a high-grade cancer. And that's why if you take the medicines and life is great, you still have to be seen. You might have to have PSAs repeated. You might have to have ultrasounds repeated, but you still have to be watched closely. If you're high, uh, if you're high risk for cancer, I would think twice about that. But it depends on uh, the bigger problem. Uh, if it's just BPH, then you're lucky because actually taking uh, an anti-inflammatory lifestyle, that means anti-inflammatory foods, relaxation techniques, exercising, watching your weight, if all that is done, you can actually shrink, in many studies, shrink the prostate. Um, some people can't wait for that or it's too hard to generate a change in life that fast, so we use the medicines. But either way, whether you do medicines and lifestyle change or just medicines alone, it never hurts to do lifestyle change. I think that the information that Gutierrez and the company New Chapter that uh, was coming up with a couple of years ago, I don't know that they published it, but I spoke with the author and I spoke with the company. They had some nice information. Now, whether it was uh, reproducible or not, I'm not sure, but the theory was that if you took enough turmeric, that's the herb in high dose, it would shrink the prostate as well. I think with Dean Ornish's information on the same protocols that he used to reverse heart disease, a community, lifestyle, change with regards to exercise and diet. He was able to reverse heart disease. He's also, be able, he's also able to find that the same practice decreases prostate cancer, at least prostate cancer in situ. So it's worth it to try. That doesn't hurt. Medicines can sometimes hurt. So it's up to you and the doctor and I guess the severity of your symptoms to figure this out. It, it would be obvious if your stream is decreased or if you're having problems with sex or ejaculation, but sometimes it's not obvious when the prostate refers pain elsewhere. You can have tip of the penis pain, you can have testicle aching that'll also be prostate related. So sometimes when you have those symptoms, look into the prostate. And on, uh, prostate uh, inflammation or size problems aren't just in older age, they can also be with younger guys too. Sexually transmitted diseases can also hide in the prostate, although they usually happen in the epididymis. 
stones can happen in the prostate. Uh, uh, so it, again, you have to get a doc to evaluate you. You can either go see a urologist or your primary care doctor to get the evaluation and or order an ultrasound, doesn't matter who. But uh, the guys that do the surgeries, those are urologists. That's if you need to have the, if all else has failed and you have to have the tube opened up, you can have what's old fashioned transurethral prostate resection or now they use lasers and they burn. So they just either, they try to destroy the tissue from the inside so that your, uh, the way you can pee, the urethra, technically the diameter is larger, you don't have the symptoms, but then leakage occurs, so it can go backwards. Uh, in a nutshell, that's kind of the prostate. Um, staying healthy, ejaculating or uh, on a regular basis, I think will keep you out of harm's way later. And uh, maintaining an anti-inflammatory diet and lifestyle are also very important. Getting a checkup, the suggestion now is depending on uh, your risk and how high your PSA level was at the time that you were cleared of cancer, you can sometimes push it to every two years, according to the American Cancer Society. The U.S. Task Force for Preventive Services has said that they don't even suggest using a PSA. They just suggest doing a digital rectal exam. And I am not confident with that. I think uh, it, it might help the whole population and the price of um, health care in the United States, but you might be missing a cancer or two with an individual. And it won't upset the government, but it will upset the patient's family if we miss that. So I would say it's a case-by-case -case basis, but for me, I would do it. I mean, it's only a, it's a 30-second exam or less. And uh, invasive, well, I don't think it's invasive, truthfully. I think a pap smear is invasive if you want to see what a woman goes through, but rectal exam, big deal. Get it done and over with, and you come back in a year. I usually say, on your birthday, make sure you get your physical exam, because no one will forget. And uh, it's not a nice way to have a birthday, but if we tell you you're cancer-free, what better present can you ask for?